Hello, I'm Sarah, and I'm a board-certified behavior analyst. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about ABC data and the functions of behavior. Fellow BCBAs, if you're interested in using this video to teach these concepts to therapists, clients, and caregivers, you can follow the link in the description to access the guided notes that go along with this video. I'm going to be doing guided notes for all my videos moving forward. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's get to it. Reinforcement is a strategy you can use, but it's also more than that. It's a phenomenon happening all the time to the behavior of almost all organisms. As I discussed in my last video, reinforcement is an event in the environment that happens after a behavior and increases the future likelihood of that behavior happening again. So remember these features of reinforcement because they're important. One, it happens after the behavior, and two, it causes that behavior to increase. It can happen to almost any behavior, regardless of if it's a good behavior or a bad one. But behavior analysts don't often think of behaviors as being good or bad. We do talk about whether we want it to increase or decrease. So for example, say your child does some chores and you give her $5, and then throughout the rest of the week she does way more chores than normal. Chances are you reinforce this behavior. So in the same way, say a child is engaging in frequent tantrums or hitting or biting or throwing things, and it happens multiple times a week. Chances are something in the environment is reinforcing that behavior. So now you might be thinking, that doesn't make any sense, I don't give a reward to my child for acting up, why does she keep doing this? Sometimes reinforcement happens when we don't intend for it to. Or maybe the reinforcement isn't coming from you, it's coming from someone or something else and you're not aware of it. All behavior serves a purpose, or the technical term is function, and when a behavior receives reinforcement, it achieves its function. There are four main functions to behavior. Sensory reinforcement, also called automatic reinforcement, escape from something, attention, and access to a tangible. Tangibles can include things, people, places, and activities. A good way to remember these four functions is with the acronym SEAT. Sensory reinforcement means that you engage in a behavior just because it feels good to do it. Some examples include stimming, eating, and using recreational drugs. Behaviors with an escape function occur to get a person out of an undesired situation, such as calling out sick from work so that you don't have to go to a meeting. Behaviors with an attention function occur to, surprise surprise, get attention from somebody. One example is Pabu climbing onto my lap to get attention. Another example is if your child keeps jumping on the couch and afterward you always give him or her a stern talking to, there's a chance that that behavior is serving the function of getting your attention, even if it isn't positive attention. Behaviors with an access function occur to get something for the person. One example is putting money into a vending machine to get a drink. Very often, behaviors serve multiple functions at one time, which can sometimes make things a little bit complicated. For example, say an introvert is in a really good mood and makes plans to go with her friend to the bar. Then at the last minute, she chickens out and texts her and cancels. So that behavior might serve the function of escape from going to the bar, but also access to all the fun, introvert-friendly things she has to do at her house. So now you might be wondering, how do we figure out the function of behavior? We do this by conducting what's called a functional behavior assessment. You might need the support of a board certified behavior analyst for best results with this process. If you're dealing with a dangerous behavior such as severe aggression, self-injurious behavior, or running away in public, you should definitely consult with a BCBA. That said, most functional assessments involve analyzing what happens right before the behavior, which is called an antecedent, and what happens right after the behavior, which is called a consequence. BCBAs often record ABC data, which stands for antecedent behavior consequence data on a behavior as it occurs. After they do this enough times, they can develop a hypothesis about what the function of the behavior might be. It's important for caregivers, teachers, and ABA staff to be able to record ABC data as well, because if the BCBA isn't there, you need to be able to communicate what happened in an accurate and objective way. Here's how it works. Let's say that Billy sees Susie's ice cream and thinks he should have it. So he says, can I have the ice cream? To which she responds, no, it's mine. So then Billy whacks her in the face. And Susie is so shocked that she lets him have the ice cream. The antecedent was that Susie denied Billy access to her ice cream. The behavior was that Billy hit Susie's face with an open hand, and the consequence was that Billy got access to the ice cream. If a BCBA was observing this and saw it happen every day for a week, she could hypothesize that the function of this behavior is access to ice cream. So what does the BCBA do with this information? She develops a behavior plan. Catch my next video to find out how it works.